Okay, this is great. So uh, we are moving towards the last module prepared for today. And this module is concerning data input and output. And uh, precisely, the goal of this uh, part is to uh, learn and practice how to read and write back files into and back from R. So this module is going to have four short parts. In the first part, we are going to learn and practice reading an exemplary CSV file. We are going to discuss a common new user mistakes in data reading and also learn how to check for problems in reading the data. Uh, in the second part, we are going to quickly discuss what we do see once we have read the data into R. We are going to discuss what are working directories and a related topic regarding relative versus absolute paths. And we're also going to practice reading another type of a file, which is a common one, Excel file. In the third part, we are going to practice writing files back, which is from R to your computer. And last but not least, we are going to discuss reading and saving uh, R objects. And we are going to explain what is that. Uh, the data we are going to use in this session, as well as in the sessions in the other class, is going to be a real publicly available data. And I guess publicly available is, uh, is going to be referring to all of the data because on the top of some toy example data sets, which we are going to download and use, we are also going to have some simulated data later on. And the data we are going to be using when it comes to actual data sets is going to be coming from Baltimore Open Data uh, Hub, which publishes um, data that are released by either Baltimore city government or other agencies, as well as data.gov, uh, which is a hub that uh, US government itself uses to publish some, some of the data. And as we are going to demonstrate, there's added, there's a functionality that was added to the package JHUR that allows you to load this data in a like ready to go way um, that you can use once you learn how to uh, load them like by hand in R. So moving forward, like reading in data is pretty much a first step of um, a lot of real data analysis uh, projects. And I think about R is that uh, R can um, read pretty much any data format um, that you can come across a, as a data analyst. And here in this class, we are going to cover uh, two or three most common um, uh, most common data files, which are CVS file and uh, oh, excuse me for a second. I'm having some uh, uh, technical um, oh, difficulty. All good. Okay, sounds great. Uh, so for, for today's class, we are going to practice how to read one of the uh, common data files you can come across. But the message I wanted to uh, give is that R is, as of today, capable of reading uh, a lot of different data formats. Some of them might be very uh, specialized that you can come across as an anal analyst. So these include, for example, uh, genomics data files or data files that you can come across when you are working with a uh, brain imaging data or uh, physical activity accelerometry data that comes from my uh, own field of research. So uh, moving forward, uh, looks like I cannot uh, easily. Uh, the data input we are going to be uh, working uh, to start with is a youth tobacco survey data set that has been um, published, as we can see, uh, to provide uh, states with a data that allows them to um, design and evaluate uh, laws and practices which are aimed at um, school students, tobacco use, exposure to env environmental tobacco smoke, smoking cessation, uh, school curriculum, minors' ability to purchase or otherwise obtain tobacco products, knowledge and attitudes about tobacco, and familiarity with, uh, with pro-tobacco and anti-tobacco media messages. And to learn about the data set, you can uh, follow this link we have placed here, but this is not an essential part of this lab. Uh, the data set has been already downloaded for you, and it is located at this link we are going to use 
to access the data. So to download the data to your computer, you can basically click it, the download should start, and um, hopefully that's going to uh, proceed without uh, any problems. So uh, let's, let's get, let's get uh, our hands dirty with the R code. So this code chunk is demonstrating a way of reading a CSV file into the R. What you can see here at the very top is that we are uh, loading a library now named uh, read R. So read R is the library which is containing a set of different useful functions that might be used to read different kind of a files. And the function we are going to start with is named readr read underscore CSV, which is already suggesting what kind of a file you can use uh, with this function. So what is placed here in the brackets is a first argument we are providing to this function, which in this case is basically location of the file. Two things about the location of the file that I want to uh, mention right now is that the location of the file in this case is put into the quotes and that this is basically a, a link to the file that has been placed in the previous slide. It is a little bit trimmed here uh, because there was not enough space, but if you go slide back, that would be precisely the link we have put here. And you can also notice that we are assigning the result of this function into the variable names DAT. In the second part of this code chunk, we are trying to look what happens. So we are using the function head, which is going to be displaying us a first couple of elements, which are in this variable. And um, this var so first of all, uh, what we can learn from the output of this head function is uh, what is the data object that has been assigned to this variable? And as you can learn from the first line, this data object is named table, which as we are going to explain later, is one of the objects which are uh, holding or preserving a data frame. What else we can learn from here is that we are having four rows displayed, as this is the number of the rows we ask to be displayed to start with, and that this data frame we have read is containing 31 columns. Columns roughly can be thought as uh, variables in your data set. We also have a first few variables uh, displayed in a way that we can investigate their value. So for example, we do have a first variable named year, which is containing a values. Then we are having another variable, which uh, in this case is location abbreviated, it stands for a state abbreviation, et cetera, et cetera. You can also notice that for some of the variables, there was not enough space to be displayed. So they are basically listed with their names, but we cannot look up uh, their values in this view. Um, so what is happening under the hood when we have called the function read underscore CSV? There is basically a two things that happen. So first of all, the function took uh, a flat file a text or a CVS file and parsed it into a rectangular matrix of strings. So by this, you can think that every element of your data was placed within a certain row and certain column of a matrix. And secondly, the type of each column was determined. So if I step back, you can actually notice that below the few names of the columns, which are, dis which are displayed here, we are having a short abbreviation which is determining what type of the data has been identified. And except the first column, all the other ones are having the value uh, CHR, which is standing for character, which means that during the reading of the file, the file was determined to have this column containing a character values. And contrast that with the first column, where the, heuri where the heuristic underlying the uh, column determination stated that those values are a numbers and assigned it a type being a character, precisely a double value. So this is what is happening behind the scenes when we are calling uh, an exemplary function read CSV to read a data file into the R. So once again, the file is split into a matrix of strings and 
the type of each column is determined. Uh, a little bit more dig into how we can use the function. Uh, so, so far in the example we have seen, we primarily specified the location of the file. The location of the file is the first argument of this read underscore CSV file. And it is the only argument which needed to be specified when we are using this function. Whether or not an argument of the function are needed to be specified or can be left unused can be looked up by checking what is the documentation of the function that we can show how to access later. This part here is presenting an excerpt, uh, a chunk of the documentation for this function. And you can see that all the things which are after the name file are having an equal sign and something on the right hand side from the equal sign shown, which basically says that this on the right hand side is so called default value of a specific argument of the function. However, file is not. So once again, file is a path to a file that we have to specify. It needs to be provided in the quotes, as we have seen in an example, and it can be representing a few different things. First of all, it can be a path to the file in your local computer that can be provided either in the form of an absolute path, which means it's going to be starting with the root of the location where the file is. And to give an example, this line is showing a path to some file located in my personal computer that start with user smart, etc. It can also be provided in a form of so-called relative path of which we're also going to comment later which assumes that R is having a pointer to some directory on your computer. And once you are putting a location of some file, R is going to be starting searching for this file within the directory it has a pointer to. So in this specific example, it would be assuming that the file of this name is located precisely at the working directory I have assumed. And last but not least, as we have shown, we can also read a file uh, from a path, which is basically a URL, like a, a path to a file on a website. Um, a technical comment is that read underscore CSV is a special case of a read delim, a more general function that allows us to uh, read uh, various uh, data files into a data frame. Uh, those two functions are coming from the same package read R that we discussed at the beginning. And read Delin is actually having a, a number of different variations that the read CSV is only a, an example of that is more tailored to a specific data files you may have. So let's take a look at the documentation part for this read Delin function you can actually see that it looks kind of alike to the documentation of the read CSV function we have discussed. Specifically, it also asks us to provide a path to a file we want to read, but it also asks us that we necessarily need to provide a delim argument, which is going to be a definition of the uh, definition of the character or a definition of an element that in a file is separating a fields within a line that are going to be constituting different columns. Uh, for example, to make it like more clear, if I would like to read a file which is a comma separated value, and I would like to use the read delim function, I would specify clearly that the delimiter that is separating the fields within a file is a comma. And similarly, in some other examples, you may have a text files which are going to be specified by a tab sign that you are going to define like that. Uh, this slide is presenting what is going to be an outcome that you are going to see in your uh, R console when you are reading a file using this function yourself. So previously, we only showed a command. But in this case, the printed output is also shown. This is to demonstrate that once you are reading the file, some additional information about what is being read is already provided to uh, you from R as a feedback. Uh, in specifically, it is going to be a description of how specific columns were identified uh, to be. 
So for example, we are going to learn from here right away that the first column, which is named year, was read as a double type. Double can be think can be thought about an example of a numeric variable. So basically we have an information that the first column in the data is of a numeric type. And uh, yes, in this specific case, actually all the first variables that were read are a numeric one. So it is like a feedback you automatically get from R. So after running this column, basically our data is successfully read. Uh, some common new user mistakes that uh, I have myself run many, many times, and I see other people uh, facing as well, especially when first trying to uh, read a file into the R, is, uh, for example, a common error that R cannot find the file you are trying to read. So cannot find is going to be the uh, words you would see in the error in case you are running into this specific problem. In most of the cases, this error is a result of the fact that you misspecified the path to the file. That can be a typo that you have placed into your uh, into the, the path definition. Or for example, it might be that you are copy pasting a URL and you are putting, putting that into the brackets, but for whatever reason, before the end of the bracket, you typed additional space and R is not able to find uh, this path because it was misspecified in that way. Some other um, problems you might encounter when you are reading a data are coming from the fact what is the content of the data. For example, if somebody you are getting the file from was manually typing the data into, it might be the case that they placed where they placed some atypical uh, character. Specifically, when there is a quote sign, a parenthesis, or a bracket within some of the values, in a, some of the corner cases, you might run into the problem that R is giving you either warning or an error that such a uh, character is appearing in your data and may cause either problems or just like cause the data reading being unable to complete. Um, how you can check whether or not any problems occurred on the way of you reading the data or how you can learn a little bit more quickly about how the data was parsed, meaning how it was read and how the column types were specified. There are a couple of ways and uh, some of the handy functions are presented here. One of the function is the function named problems that asks you to provide the read in data object insight. So you can recall from the previous, previous slides that we have read a data frame that we assigned to a variable named date, uh, sorry, named DAT. And we are plugging this variable into the, uh, this function to learn if there were any problems when the R was reading this data. In this particular case, there were no problems, which we can learn from the fact that the table, which is presenting the results of running these problems, is having zero rows, precisely indicating that there is no problem in reading this data. Further, there is a function spec that is displaying the whole list of the whole, the whole list specifying what are the variable names and into what type, either character or numeric, they were parsed into. And uh, some other potentially useful function you may want to use in your uh, future, uh, future work is a function named stop for problems. This function would cause the R script to stop in case there were any problems related to reading your data. An example would be a, a use case where you are uh, reading a data and on the top of that, for example, specifying that you want a particular column to be parsed into a date. However, there is some like typo in one of the values in the column that you want to be read as a date. Uh, for example, that may still, R may still be able to read in the data, but may not be able to parse or to convert each of the entry of the data you're reading into the date. So if such a problem occur uh, in a script you're writing, you may be interested in saying, no, uh, if that happened, I want my program to stop. I do not want to proceed with the analysis if some data I am reading especially if the script is automated and aimed to be processing multiple files at a time, 
I don't want the script to be proceeding. So such a uh, stop for problems function can be used to stop the, <laughs> stop the program in case an error occurred. And last but not least, I guess this part should have appeared a little bit earlier. I wanted to point your attention that whenever you would like to learn more about a function, uh, a way to access a documentation of the function within um, our studio would be to uh, type a question mark and the name of the function. An alternative way would be just to type uh, help and the name of the function you are interested in learning more in the brackets. Um, another comment is that our studio toolbar, our studio is um, giving you possibilities to do some of the um, uh, some of the data reading uh, by clicking. Uh, specifically, in our studio, you can use file import data set and choose, for example, from text if you are interested in reading uh, just a regular text file. Um, do executing this comment would uh, clicking through this comment would also cause a corresponding R code to be appearing in your console. So, for example, if you prefer to start with using R Studio to read in the data, you may learn what would be the code you would have to type to do exactly the same thing. And we're actually going to practice that within the last minutes of the uh, of the lab. Last but, last but not least, I wanted to mention that uh, there are a variety of other available methods to perform reading a data files, and some of them are coming from the base R. And they tended to be used a lot in the past. They look, their syntax is similar to the methods we have just uh, presented. And you may likely run into folks using those methods if you are searching yourself for the uh, materials on the web. Um, uh, however, uh, since, for example, in our studio, the authors have moved to have the more modern methods, the, the ones we have described previously, to be the ones that are being used when you are using the R studio and click in method to read the data, we also decided to continue to use this read R package functions throughout uh, the class. And now there was a time that we wanted to um, move to the lab and exercise to uh, one exercise, which is a reading a CSV file. But I also see we are almost at the time. So I think I'm going to yield it to uh, other instructors to decide what to do. OK, looks like everybody is back. And we are left with just a couple of slides uh, on the data reading and writing. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Yeah, so um, we are now going to discuss briefly what are the working directories and cover the file writing to the file, and that's going to be it for this section. So working directory is something that you have um, implicitly been using so far. Working directory is a directory that R assumes you are working in. Uh, there's always some working directory already specified. You might be just not aware of that because you have not had a need to use it explicitly. Uh, when we say setting a working directory or like learning the working directory, it literally means either getting the information, what is the working directory that is currently set within your R session, or again, setting working directory would mean that you are explicitly specifying what's going to be the working directory from now on. And here we have two examples. One is the way of learning. What is your working directory? So if you type to the console get WD, and WD stands for working directory, uh, you will see a printed uh, path which specifies what is your current working directory. And setting wor working directory works Analogously, we are using a set WD function. And inside, in quotes, we are specifying the path to the directory we want to have assumed as a working directory. And why we are talking about that? It is because R uses working directory as a starting place when it search for the files, when you are either reading them or writing them. And let's take a look at the few examples. Um, when we are just typing a 
name of the file into, for example, a function read underscore CSV, R, R is going to assume that this file is in the working directory you are currently working in. Uh, alternatively, if I am, for example, typing as a path I am providing to the function that is reading a file, a name of some other directory, in this case, for example, data and slash, and then the name of the file, R would assume that this data directory is located in the working directory I'm having. So basically, if I want to use in reading or writing a file, only a name of the file or like a relative path to the file, I have to be aware and make sure that the working directory I'm working with is the correct one. Otherwise, R will not be able to locate the file and we'll see the error, the file is not found, etc. cetera. Uh, another way of reading and writing the files that some of us have been practicing is to use absolute path. Absolute path is the path that starts with the root of uh, the file path you're working with. And this is an example of that. I'm using uh, a Mac machine. So at the beginning, there's going to be users, my username, and some directory that is located in this, uh, in this place, etc. So when we are specifying an absolute path, the working directory information is not used. However, once again, when we are only specifying a name of the file or a relative path, uh, it is assumed that the file or this directory is located in our working directory. And um, well, so far we've been discussing data reading. It is equally important when you're working with data to be able to write out the data back. A typical work workflow of using that would be, for example, you're getting a data, you're reading that, uh, that into the R, you're making some analysis, and then you end up with a new data set which got processed, got like summarized, et cetera. And you want to write the output of your work into a new, say, comma separated values file that you want to share with your collaborators, et cetera. So for the purpose of writing the file, we are also going to be using tools from the read R package. Uh, those tools are the methods which are naming in a similar convention that we have seen so far, which is we are having the word write, we are having the underscore, and then we are having a bunch of options which are suggestive of what kind of a file we want to read into. Uh, so once again, we would have write CSV, which would be writing comma separated values, or we have this more general write delim, which asks us to specify what's going to be the delimiter that will be separating the values within each row of the file. But let's focus our attention to this first one. This part comes from the documentation of the right CSV file. And it is, uh, we can learn from this part that when we are writing the file, we need to necessarily provide two arguments. Necessarily provide means once again that they are not having their default values. And those two arguments is X and a file. And let's take a closer look what they mean. X is, a, for example, a data frame you want to write. So it would be replaced with, with the, in the, like, um, in the example, it would be replaced with the variable, which is containing the data frame you want to uh, write in. And the file is the path where you want the R object to be written. And similarly, as with reading the file, here we also have three different options. We can use uh, an absolute path, a relative path, or a like, special case of a relative path, which is a file name only. And again, depending on what is your working directory, if I'm only using a file name to specify the destination of the file I want to read, it would be written in my working directory. So here we are having two examples. One example is uh, using the right CSV function. It is using a variable name that, and it is specifying the name of the file. The other would have exactly the same output, it is just an example of using this write delim function, which is a more general version of the write CSV. And the difference is that here, I also have to specify the delimiter, which is a, which is a character that's going to be used to separate values within the file. And if I'm using a comma, the output is going to be basically a comma separated value written into the file. And um, last but not, last thing I wanted to mention within a um, this, uh, this module is that you may run into uh, so-called uh, files with so-called RDS extension. So RDS is a uh, R-native file 
format, uh, which which is uh, a way of uh, storing uh, our objects. Uh, what does it mean? It means that I can use write RDS and read RDS functions. In this case, we are using again tools provided with this uh, read R package to write or read back into the R R variables. And let's take a look at the example. So let's say that I have been working so far with a data frame named that. What I can do is to, instead of saving that as a CVS file, I can use this R extension file to save it as a RDS file. And this is an example of doing that. However, the distinction with using uh, RDS compared to some, uh, to compared to the uh, writing the text files that we have discussed so far is that I can also use it to write a single, like any other R object. And here uh, I'm, we are seeing an example of uh, defining a vector, which is a vector containing three different numbers. And this vector itself is going to be written to the file. So what you can see here, I am using this function again, and I'm providing as a first argument the name of the variable that is containing a vector, and I'm writing that into the file my vector underscore RDS. So now what I can do, I can go back to this file like a days later or whatever, read it back to the R, and also notice that I'm going to be assigning that to a variable. And for, for the sake of the example, I'm going to name it in a different, in a different way to, um, to just highlight that this is a newly created object I am doing here. And you can actually see that in that when I am printing the X to variable to the console, I'm seeing a vector of the same numbers that I have saved. So again, our bi binary file is a way to uh, write and read and our objects. Those can be a data frames, but those can be also any other R object, for example, a single vector. So something you may uh, come across. And we have a last lab part left. In this lab, we are going to practice uh, writing a file into the, uh, from R into the file. 